Y llegó con Sanofa, el grupo que pones. Y con Sanofa. Sanofa. Pero este es el increasing value. ¿Por qué? Y este es el increasing value. ¿Por qué? Este grupo, este grupo, es muy bueno para la clase. Thank goodness. Y así, cuando el otro es el grupo, es el grupo. So I can replace this cosine alpha. 
means not how many meters per second, but how many radians per second. So since there are two pi radians in one second front, in one full circle, and it takes two seconds to go around once, it is immediately obvious that omega equals two pi divided by t. This is something that I would like you to remember. Omega equals two pi divided by t. Two pi radians in total two seconds. The speed, z, is a coordinate circumference, two pi r, divided by the time to go along once, which is two pi divided by t is omega, and that also the right for this omega r. And this is also something that I want you to remember. These two things you really want to remember. The speed is not changing, but the velocity vector is changing. Therefore, there must be an acceleration that is non-negotiable. You can divide what the acceleration must be in terms of magnitude and in terms of direction. It's about a five to six minutes derivation. You'll find it in your book. I have decided to give you the results that you read up on the book so that we can more talk about the physics rather than on the derivation. This acceleration that is necessary to make the change in the velocity vector is always pointing towards the center of the circle. We call it centripetal acceleration. Centripetal. Pointing towards the center. And here, also pointing towards the center is a vector. And the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration equals the square divided by r, which is this b, and therefore it also omega square r. And so now we have three equations, and those are the only three you really would like to remember. We can have a simple example. Uh, let's have a vacuum cleaner, which has a rotor inside, which scoops the air out or in, whatever you look at it. And let's assume that the vacuum cleaner scoops at a radius r of about 10 centimeter, and that it goes around 600 revolutions per minute, 600 rpm. 600 rpm, the boost time rate, is a frequency f of 10 hertz. So it would translate into a period going around in one tenth of the second. So omega, the angular velocity, which is 2 pi divided by t, is then approximately 63 radians per second, and the speed t equals omega r is then roughly 6.2 meters per second. The centripetal acceleration, and that's really my goal, centripetal acceleration would be omega square r, or if you prefer, you could take v square over r, you would get the same answer, of course, and you will find that that is about 400 meters per second square. And that is huge. That is 40 times the acceleration due to gravity. It's a phenomenal acceleration, a simple vacuum cleaner. Notice that the acceleration, the centripetal acceleration, is linear in r. Don't say that it is inversely proportional with r. That's a mistake, because v itself is a function of r. If you were sitting here, then your velocity would be lower. Since omega is the same for the entire motion, you really have to look at this equation and you see that centripetal acceleration is proportional with r. Therefore, if you were, if this were a disk which was rotating and you were at the center of the disk, the centripetal acceleration would be zero. And if you were to walk out further out, it would increase. Now, the acceleration must be caused by something. There is no such thing as a free launch. There is something that must be responsible for the change in this velocity. And there's something I will call either a pull or I will call it a push. Now, next lecture, when we deal with Newton's laws, we will introduce the word force. Today, we will only deal with the words pull and push. So there must be a pull or a push. Imagine that this is a turntable, and you are sitting here on the turntable, on a chair. It's going around with angular velocity omega, and your distance to the center, let's say, is the r. You're sitting on this chair, and you must experience, that's non-negotiable, um, centripetal acceleration, okay, you see, which is omega squared times r. Where do you get it from? Well, if you, if you see this voltage to the, to the turntable, then you will feel a push in your back. So you're sitting on this thing, you go around, and you will feel that the seat is pushing you in your back. And so you feel a push. And that gives the push. Yeah, I'll, I can give this way. Red color for now. So you'll feel a push in your back. The push, apparently, is necessary for the acceleration. Alternatively, suppose you have in front of you a stick. You're not sitting on a chair. You don't get a push on the back. But you hold onto the stick. And now to go around by holding onto the stick. Now the stick is pulling on you in the same direction. So now you will say, aha, someone is pulling on you. Whether it is the pull or whether it is the push. One of the, either one of the two is necessary for you to go around in that circle on the turntable with that constant speed. Now the classic question comes up, which we often ask to people who have no scientific background. If you were to go around like this, and something is either pushing on you or is pulling on you to make this possible, suppose you took that push out all of a sudden, the pull is down. What is now the motion of the person who is sitting on the turntable? And many non-scientists say, well, people do like this. That's what the intuition says. You go around in a circle, and all of a sudden you no longer have to pull or the push, and you go around in a spiral. And obviously, that is not the case. What will happen is, if you have, at this moment in time, a velocity in this direction, and you take the pull or the push out, you will start flying off in that direction. And depending upon whether it's gravity or no gravity, there may be a change, but if, this were, if there were no gravity, it would just continue to go along that line, and you would not make this crazy spiral motion. I have here a disk, which we will rotate, and at the end, the edge of the disk here, we have a little ball. And the ball is attached to that disk, which is true. So now this is vertical, and so this is going to go around the angular velocity of omega, 
And we have a string here, and the string is attached to this ball, and the whole thing is going around. And so one moment they find this has a velocity, like so, and therefore there must be non-negotiable centripetal acceleration, which in magnitude is all the best we are. Or if you want to, we square the divided by R. Now, I cut this. And that's like taking away the push and the pull. The string that you have here is providing the pull on this ball. This ball is feeling a pull from the string, and that provides it with the centripetal acceleration. Cut the string and the pull. It's on, and the object will take off. And if there were gravity here, as so it is in 26100, it would become a parameter, and it would end up here. If, however, I cut the ball exactly when it is here, I cut the ball when it is string, then of course it will fly straight up, and gravity will act on it, will come to a hole, and it will come back. So really, we can go along a straight line. But you would clearly see then that it's not going to do what many people think, that it would start to scroll around. Just go shh, shh, and just back. So let's look at that. We have that here. We have that all the string is behind here, you cannot see the string. I will rotate it. Just wait for it to pick up a little speed. And the knife, which is actually either, is behind here, and I push the knife in, I do it exactly here. It comes the string, and whoosh, it goes up. You ready for this? Are you ready? Three, two, one, zero. Wow, that was very high, so you see, nothing like this. It simply continued on in the direction that it was going. It wasn't going into a blah blah because I was shooting it straight up. So the string forms the connection between the rotating disc and the ball, and therefore the ball is responsible for the centripetal acceleration. Let's now think about tennis. Tennis go around the sun. There is no swing. So who is pushing? Who is pulling? Well, it's clear that it must be gravity, it must be the sun that is pulling on the tennis. Now, I realize that the orbits of tennis are not nicely circular, so it's not really a uniform circular motion. We will deal with orbits in great detail in a few weeks, just the orbits and elliptical orbits. Let us just assume for simplicity now that the orbits are roughly circular, just to get a little bit of feeling for it. And you can look up now in your book, which I did for you, even in your preliminary version, you can look up what the mean distance of the planet is to the sun, and you can look up what the period is, the time to go around the sun. The time to go around the sun is not the same for all planets. The planets are not attached to a turntable. table. Anywhere, any person on the turntable table would go around in the same amount of time. You know that that's not true for planets. It takes the Earth a year to go around. The sun it takes you to 12 years to go around. So don't make the mistake to think that Omega is the same for all planets. That's not true. So I look up the distance, the mean distance to these various planets, and you see that here in units of kilometers, notice that Mercury is about 100 times closer than Pluto. By the way, this is on the web, so don't copy this, you'll find this on the Angle 1 homepage. Then I, I looked up how many years it takes to go around the sun, 12 years for Jupiter, one year for the Earth, and I looked at all the other value values. Then since I know the periods, I can calculate omega, omega is 2 pi divided by t, so I know omega, and then I take omega square times the mean distance from the sun, and this is, of course, the centripetal acceleration. So the planets experience this centripetal acceleration is a crazy unit, but who cares about the units here? I notice that Mercury, which is 100 times closer than Pluto, has an Centripetal acceleration, which is 10,000 times larger than Pluto. 100 times closer, that's a 10,000 times larger centripetal acceleration. So what I did was, I plotted this data, the centripetal acceleration, with the mean distance from the sun, and I did that on board the rock table. And what you immediately strikes, is very striking, is that all these points are going to fall the planets, they fall on a straight line. And so, what is the goal of that line? Well, I tried various slopes, and I found that the slope is very, very close to minus 2. Here is a slope of minus 2, and I can overlay this and notice that the tip is absolutely stunning. Therefore, you cannot escape the conclusion that the transcriptal acceleration, which is the result of gravity, falls off as 1 over r squared. Uh, we refer to this often in physics as a 1 over r squared law, and therefore the effect of gravity itself must go down with r squared. So if you are 100 times further away, like Pluto compared to Mercury, then the gravitational the centripetal acceleration, which is due to gravity, is 10,000 times smaller. And we will learn a lot about gravity in the future. We will just leave it for now. If you took the sun away, it would be like cutting the string that provides the pool, and in that case, what you will see is that the planets will just take off along the straight line. They will continue to go. They wouldn't have anything to turn on them anymore. Now, let's look at an object that we're going to rotate. I have a glass tube, and I want to rotate and in the glass tube, I have a model. The glass tube is very smooth. I see the glass tube. Here's the marble. I'm going to rotate it in this direction. So it's an angular velocity of omega, now the next is perpendicular to the backwards. So the, the marble here has a velocity, like so at this moment in time. But it's a very smooth glass tube. And the marble is very smooth. The glass cannot push on the marble, nor can the glass pull on the marble. Now the marble gets an because the marble needs a centripetal acceleration in this direction in order to go around like this. But there is nothing to provide that centripetal acceleration. So the marble is doing exactly the same that the planets will do if 
you take the sun away, the model continues to go in the direction that it was going. So by the time that the tube is here, the model is here. And by the time that the tube is here, the model is there. So the model finds its way to the edge. And that's, of course, the basic idea behind it. So that's the My grandmother had always just the idea that she has such fantastic ideas, I remember. And that she would have lettuce. We have no good way of lying lettuce. And I would take the lettuce and turn it like this. Take a phone. She had a memory of course. She took a call of her. And of course, first of all, we would wash the lettuce. That's what I was saying. I would wash it once. My grandmother would wash it three times. But that's what we have grandmother for. So, that comes to me. So that is, we were also very fond of spinach. So, as for spinach, she would wash it. That was the spinach. Then she would take something to cover it up. Take some saran wrap or something else. Put it over it. And put it in the So, rubber bands around it to hold it. And now what she's going to do, she's going to swing it around. And now, the water is like these models. The water will work its way to the edge. But there are holes. So the water will come out. Isn't she clever? Okay, I'll give you a demonstration. Be careful. You can make it. There's water on your lecture notes. But I want to show you the basic idea behind it. It's very interesting. She would go out. She would do this outside, by the way. But I have no choice, so we'll do it here. So there we go.
これ見るとこれ以上の車は通ってないんでしょうかなんかこれがヒントになってますこれがあの形でいいんだよ、あれを高くからずっとやってくる。
me just a second to win. So, the swing side said, look, I don't have to do anything. Then if you provide me with the 9.8, lead us the second square that I required. Now, I'm going to swing you faster. So the zero go up, and so the zero acceleration will go up. The swing will say, aha, I'm going to pull now on this person. Because the gravitational acceleration alone is not enough. I need some extra pull. So the string is going to tighten and pull on you. And I say, hello there, in what direction is gravity? And you say, gravity is in this direction. Why? Because you feel the string is pulling on you in this direction. So you experience gravity there. Now comes the question, how real is this? This is very, very real. It is so real that if I took a 